Hello and welcome to this Unreal 5 tutorial. We're going to use a runtime virtual texture inside Unreal to blend our terrain material with our assets that are touching that terrain. First thing where we're gonna start is I have a scene which I created a very simple terrain on the ground and I'm using one of the starter content materials that I signed on the this terrain. We are going to create a new material which is going to be on the sphere and it's going to blend with that terrain. Before we before we jump into creating the material, we need to make sure that we have enabled the runtime virtual textures inside Unreal. We need to go into edit, project settings, rendering, and we need to scroll down all the way to the section that says virtual textures, and we need to enable virtual texture support. That is going to require us to restart Unreal. After restarting, we are going to go into our content browser, and inside the texture folder, I'm going to create two new textures. Right click texture, and we are going to look for runtime virtual texture. I'll name those RVT environment. This is going to capture the color from the environment. And I'm going to create a second one, which is going to be RVT underscore height. We're going to use the RVT height for capturing a height map from the environment. Now we need to create a runtime virtual volume, which is going to be done from create. And we can just type here, run time virtual volume texture. Inside our runtime virtual volume, we need to first select our bounds. We can either click the drop down and select our landscape, or we can choose the picker and click on the viewport. Then inside runtime virtual textures, we need to select our environment. This is the one that we earlier created. And once we have those things set it up, we need to click set bounds. This is going to create a volume around the size of our terrain. Now, after we have a volume for our color, we are going to create a second one, runtime virtual texture, which we are going to use for our height. So we are going to repeat the same settings, capturing our landscape, but this time inside our virtual texture, instead of environment, we are going to pick height. Again, set bounds. Now I'm going to open my master material for the ground. In my case, I'm using a material which came from the starter content, and we are going to convert this into material attribute. But before doing that, let me make a new attribute, and I'm going to reconnect all the different pieces exactly the same way as they are connected right now. Here, this one goes into our roughness, and our lerp goes to our normal map. Now I can click use material attribute, which is going to change the last result that we can connect our make material attribute directly to here. But the reason why we did this is because now from here I can type get material attributes and then from the attribute types, we can get all the necessary things that we want to blend. I'm going to click the plus button and you can see that it's starting to add base color. And if we don't need any of these parameters, we can always select it and then come in here and change it, for example, to normal. Now I'm going to drag from the base color and type runtime virtual texture output. This is the one that we need. We're going to connect the different pins except our normal. And the reason why we are not connecting the normal directly, because we need to change it from tangent space to world space. This is done by dragging from our normal and then transform. We are going to select this and you can see that our source is tangent space and then it's changing it to world space. Of course, we can do other manipulations here, but in our case, this is the way that we need to change it. And now it can be connected to our normal. And we also need to take the world position because this is going to be in our world height. I'm going to right click and type world position. We don't need anything except our Z, which is going to go to world height. For now, we are going to just apply and save our material, and we are going back into our viewport. We are going to select our landscape and going to scroll down to a section that says virtual texture. Here inside draw in virtual textures, we need to add two materials. On the first one, we are assigning the environment and on the second one, we are assigning the height. Now, the next step that we need to do is start preparing our asset material. I'm going to create a new master material and in here, I'm going to use again a material attribute. 
we are going to make a material attribute as well. The left side of the logic, we can do whatever we want with our material. So for example, we can put our base color. Now the part that we need to do is to set up how exactly it's going to take the information from our landscape. I'm going to drag from our make material attribute and type blend material attributes. Then I'm going to type world position because we need to create the alpha for the blending and second thing that we need is runtime virtual texture we need the runtime virtual texture sample once we have the runtime virtual texture sample selected here inside the virtual texture we are going to put the height map we are going to take the world position and use a subtract and then we are going to take the height map world height and put it into B. This way we can get an information where exactly the object and the landscape are intersecting. I'm going to add a divide. This way we will be able to control the hardness and I'm going to create a constant naming it blend hardness. I'll give it a default value of one and connect this to B. And then the last part that we need to do is to use a, a saturate node. This is going to clump all of our information between zero to one. Now we are connecting this into our alpha. Next step is we are going to need another runtime virtual texture sample, but this time we are going to select our environment. We are going to need to get another make material attribute after our runtime virtual texture. And we are going to get all the nodes that we would like to transfer as information. And here, once again, because the information that we are going to get is world space, we need to change it to tangent space for our normal maps. I'm going to type transform. And this time we are going from world space to tangent space. And this connects to our normal map. Now we can connect this attribute into A and the default material that we have into B. And all of this goes into our material attributes. Before saving it and testing it, just a few things that we need to adjust. So on the absolute position, we need to make sure that we are using only Z. And here I'm going to make this slightly bigger so that we see the result better in the viewport. I will also change the base color just so that again, we have a better visuals on the viewport. And now in the viewport, I'm going to assign our material to the sphere. And if I move it down to my terrain, you can see how that terrain texture is being projected onto our sphere. Now, as a next step, we are just going to add a couple of parameters so that we can control this transition a little bit better when we create a material instance. First part, except the hardness, we are going to add also something that is going to increase or decrease the fallout area. I will move some things around just to make a little bit more space for us. Then I'm going to disconnect right after our subtract. We are going to right click somewhere in the empty space and type object bounce. From the object bounce, we don't need all the data. So here we are going to tape a mask and we don't need R and G. We only need the blue channel. After that, we can hold A and press somewhere on our graph. We are going to connect our subtract into A of this additive. And then from the mask, it goes to B. We will need another subtract where from the mask, we are going to get a multiply by holding M and pressing in the graph. And that multiply connects into B. And then the only part we need is a parameter. So we are going to use one of the Scala parameters and it's going to be blend fall off. Let's give it a default value of 10 and connect this to B. And now we connect our subtract to the divide that we had before. Let's apply, go to our viewport. And before testing the material further, I want to make a material instance. We are going to assign the new material instance to our sphere. And going back to our viewport with our material instance open, we can see that we have the two parameters. So we can control from one of the parameters our fall off. And from the second one, we can control the hardness of this blending. Now, if I move the sphere slightly higher, you can see that here we are starting to get some stretchings. So let's see how we can fix that. Going back to our material for our assets, I'm going to right click and type vertex normal world space. Then we are making a mask. After that, we are holding M and creating a multiply. We are going to hold one to create a parameter and that parameter I'm going to name blend sides. 
we are going to connect it into B. We are using a saturate node once again for clamping everything. And now we are going to need one more multiply where we are going to use the previous saturate node over here from our logic of how everything blends. In order to remove the parts, we are going to need a one minus. So we are going to invert the result from here. And then this result goes into A, what we just created for our sites is going to go into B. And now we need to once again invert it. So one more time, one minus for our final alpha result. So here, why we did a couple of inverts is because we want the exact opposite of the information that comes from here. That's why we use that. And then as well to remove it from our result and fix the sites, we need to invert it once again. Now this bit is going to be connected to the alpha channel. Going back to our viewport, we have our blend sides parameter. So if we slide that, you can see that we can start controlling and remove a little bit of that awful blending. I will recommend just so that your material looks nice and clean, all of this can go into a material function. If you want to learn more about material functions and how to create them, follow my channel and I'll put a link down below of how to create one. Thank you for joining me in today's video. Subscribe and follow for more game development tutorials. See you next time.